Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to do an example about Carnot maps. What we have to do, so basically I have an expression of f, which is a function of four different variables, a, b, c, and d. And then I have the expression. Um, so I want to go ahead and plot the Carnot map as the first step. Then I want to find the minimum sum of products. And uh, at last, I'm going to find the minimum product of sums. Okay, so we'll go step by step. So the first thing that we want to do, we have to draw the Carnot map. So as you can see, we have a four variable Carnot map. So here is my Carnot map of four, four variables. So I have A, B, C, and D, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, and 0, 1, and 1, 0. Okay? Now, I want to fill in this uh, Carnot map with respect to the expression that I have. And you don't have to convert this expression to the uh, mean term expansion first to be able to write the Carnot map. So you can do that, but you may ask to not doing that. So basically, uh, sometimes you are not allowed, for example, in an exam, you're not allowed to do that, to convert the expression to the mean term expansion first and then plot the Carnot map, okay? So what do you have to do here? Just look at the terms that you have inside your uh, expression. So first one is a prime b prime, okay? You know that a prime b prime is for this column here, right? And the other terms, so c and d, are not appearing in this term. So it means that c and d were not common in any of the terms inside this group, right? So if I have a group of ones here, you can see that this group of one is a prime b prime, right? Because in all of them, c and d are changing, correct? And but a and b are both zero and zero, so a prime b prime, correct? Then let's go to the next term. So the next term is c d prime. Again, see, you have these two variables, so you know that the other two variables are all the time changing, okay, and this can be a hint to you that, okay, there is a group of four ones, right? Okay, there is a group of four ones, but in a row or in a column, so they cannot be like one, 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 and one. Why am I saying they cannot be like that? Because I can see that the two terms that I have here are two terms that are near each other in the Carnot map. Okay? So, so A and B are uh, changing in this term, so we don't care about, uh, the co we're not looking at the columns, but we'll look at the rows. Because I have C and D playing a role in this term. So I have C, D prime. Okay? Which row is that? This is the row that contains C, D prime in all of its terms. Right? So C, D prime is the term that is common in all of the ones inside this group. Right? Then we go to the third term. So the third term is A, B, C. So we know that there is a group of one. How can I say that there is a group of one? How? I'm not saying that there is a single one. Because we know that when we have a four variable kernel map, if you have four um all four variables inside the term of, uh, you know, inside the term of one cell, you know that that cell should be single, okay? So the only time that I'm sure that the cell is complete, the group is completely uh, containing of one single cell is in these two terms here, because all the variables are common in only one cell, right? So still we are in the third term here, A, B, C. So A, B, we know that AB is this column, right? Both of them are 1. And then C, so where C is 1, so in these two columns. So the intersection of these two arrows here and the one arrow at the top. So you see that that intersection will be this group of 1s here, right? Okay. Now that I found uh, all three terms, I'm going to go to the term 4. So term 4 and 5 is easy, uh, are easy because um, they're only, each of them are one cell. So A prime, B prime, so A prime, B prime, and then C, D prime, which is this cell here, right? This cell is what? It is A prime, 
prime d and d prime right okay so um let's erase that okay now the fifth term it is a b c so a b and c are all one and then d is zero so you see that this is a b c and d prime okay so now i have plotted my carnal map so we know that the other terms are equal to zero okay so we plotted the carnal map now for part B, we want to find the minimum sum of product. Now we want to use our Carnot map, okay, and group the ones in a way that we can have the minimum sum of product. All right? So we have to group them efficiently, right? So here you, you saw that there were two ones that were just grouped um, individually while they were grouped before in uh, bigger groups, okay? So I see that I have four ones here. And I do have another full one here. And then I do have a group of two ones here. So you see that with these three groups, I have covered all the ones that I have. Okay? So I'm going to name these groups. So when I refer to them, you know that what group I'm talking about. So now if I want to write the sum of product, minimum sum of product, F will be equal to group 1. We know that it is equal to A prime, B prime, plus group 2 is going to be C, D prime. Group 3 is A, B, D, right? And with only these three terms, I have already covered all the ones that I have, right? So I don't need these two terms here, this one and this one, okay? All right, so we did part B. Now what we want to do is minimum product of sum. Okay, so I'm going to draw the Carnot map again because I don't want to, um, the other one to be too uh, crowded. So here is another Carnot map. It's the same Carnot map. I'm just redraw it. So we have to find the product of sum. We know that if we want to find the product of sum using the Carnot map, it's better to start from zeros, right? And find f prime first and then complement that f prime in order to find f okay so i will start from zeros uh where are the zeros that i have they're here so i'm not going to write the ones anymore here i'm just writing the zeros okay so i have to find f prime using the zeros so when i'm writing f prime using the zeros you're just dealing with zeros as a one but writing it for f prime how so f prime is equal to let's go ahead and group these zeros so i have a group of four zeros here i have another group of four zeros here right i have these two and this two okay so let me name them one two group 3 and group 4. So, f prime is equal to group number 1. Group number 1, we see that it is equal to a, b prime. Group number 2 is equal to b, d prime, right? So, group number 1, let me see if I did this right. Oh, okay. So, in group number 1, I did a mistake here. It is a and c prime. All right? And then group number three is A prime, B, D. And group number four is A, B prime, and D. Right? So we have A, B prime, and D for number four. Okay. Now that I have F prime, I have to complement this F prime in order to find my F, which is my product of sum. Okay? So the F that I will complement here. So I'm writing my product of sum, okay? So I'm going to have f because I complemented f prime and then I have to complement the right side of that equation as well. This is prime, that equality. Now I have to prime this. So using the De Morgan's law, I know that this will be equal to a b prime prime 
multiply by b c prime prime multiply by a prime b d prime multiply by a b prime d prime prime okay and again using the de morgan's law because i still do not have the product of sum i have the product of some products right so using the de morgan's law i will have a prime or c b prime or c a or b prime or d prime a prime or b or c okay so this is my product of sum okay all right so i think oh okay uh, this one here was d up there you see that this was d so then we're going to have a prime here all right so i hope you understand this um material for this kernel map and how to find the minimum sum of products and minimum product of sum um, if you have any questions you can leave it in the comments down below and thank you for watching